So I'm delighted to be here this morning and to have the opportunity to present our Quail Biog program um, and demonstrate how this may help local authorities address the biodiversity emergency. Um, as Nuala mentioned, I work for the Environmental Education Unit of Antashka. I oversee the Learning About Forest program and the Quail Biog Initiative. Um, so our our um, education unit runs some of the, our, the largest and most successful environmental education programs in Ireland, um, programs such as Green Schools, Blue Flag, National Spring Clean, um, the Green Flag for Parks was mentioned yesterday, um, Clean Coast was mentioned yesterday. So we run these programs and over many years we've forged um, wonderful relationships with our local authorities throughout the country and also many government agents, our departments as well. So the EU is also the national operator here in Ireland for four of the five FEE programmes. FEE is the environmental education, the foundation for environmental education um, and they run five international programmes, green schools here in Ireland, it's known e as Eco Schools Internationally, Blue Flag for Beaches, YRE, which is Young Reporters for the Environment, and then LEAF for Learning About Forests, which I'll mention in a moment. Um, so the two programmes, as I say, that I'm working on are LEAF. LEAF has been run in 30 countries around the world, and it's theme-based like green schools, so schools working on the programme and colleges actually um, will look at forests and biodiversity, forests and climate, forests and water, forests and products, and forests and community. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, due to limited funding, we're not running this full program. Um, we're running a slightly slimmed down version, and it's been funded by the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. It's our Investigate Woodlands program. So on to our Quail Biog, which is what I'm talking mostly about today. Um, our Quail Biog program, which is Irish for Little Woodlands, began back in 2018. And it's been a bit of a journey, I guess. So we received funding from our uh, private sponsor from the US um, GS Memorial Foundation. And we also were very lucky to be identified as um, a worthy organization by Paul Simon when he was touring um, in 2018 and he donated a sum of money to us. Um, and we decided to put this towards a planting initiative. We didn't exactly know what we were going to do at the time, um, but our colleagues that run LEAF in um, the Netherlands were working on the Tiny Forest Initiative. So we initially thought this would be a wonderful idea, and it is a wonderful idea, but for us it just um, didn't suit the work that we do because we involve and engage in communities and schools, and although the Tiny Forest Initiative is fantastic, it was painted, painted and painted and they um, made a, quite a strict list of criteria which didn't suit the work that we do in schools. Um, we wanted to engage and involve them and when we plant our woodlands we want the students or communities to actually be, go, be able to go in and experience the nature and the Tiny Forest Initiative um, doesn't always allow for this. So Quill Biog was created um, and the objectives of our two programmes are to educate and upskill. Sorry. Um, and education, I would say, is absolute key to all our programmes across the unit. It's, um, it's, it's, it's um, central to the work we do, in particular in our Quill Biog programme. We educate and upskill at every stage and we bring the students along with us or the community members depending on the group we're working with. We also address the biodiversity and climate crisis, we provide nature-based solutions, we help to change attitudes towards forestry and then we engage in lo with local authorities and local communities in the expansion of urban and rural tree planting. So both of our woodland programmes address many and probably all of the SDGs, um, but however, the strongest connection, of course, is with Goal 15, Life on Land. Um, our programmes aim to educate students about biodiversity and encourage them to take positive action and protect it. Um, so between 2018 and 22, we planted 20 little woodlands around the country. Now, this number would have been probably substantially higher, but unfortunately, 
COVID um, entered our lives <laughs> and it, um, it put a lot of roadblocks in the way. So these woodlands were originally planted actually for the planting season 2018-2019, but because of many school closures and lockdowns, they actually all only got put in the ground last year. Um, so we were delighted that this actually happened. And where they were planted, actually speaking of Mary Immaculate, close to us here today, um, we planted one there last year. Um, this is, I suppose, um, one of our keystone woodlands because, of course, you've got a captive audience here of educators that are going out into the workforce um, and educating young students, and we're talking about experiences in early age. Um, so this is a real um, positive story. So we're hoping to... Well, we've built a wonderful relationship with the lecturer there, Anne Dolan. We're hoping to continue this. Um, we also have put in two community woodlands. We have one in Kinmare, again, Supervalue were here yesterday. Supervalue and Little um, had a, a joint public site within their car park, and they worked with the tidy towns there and also the local secondary school. So we were able to all come together and put in a small um, native woodland in this space. Our other community site then was in Cork um, in conjunction with Home Tree and Cork City Council. And again, we're having ongoing workshops there um, with three planned for this coming year as well. Then the remaining 17 schools were put, sorry, woodlands were put in in schools throughout the country, both primary and secondary. Um, as we work with the Green Schools programme as well, of course, it's obvious to offer our woodlands to schools that are working on the Green Schools programme, but in particular the schools that are actually working on the theme of biodiversity. So that's how we um, have been running the programme to date. Not always, but most of our school woodlands are in schools that are focused on biodiversity. You can see there just very quickly, the six original were Paul Simon and GS Memorial. They were in Limerick. We had Cully and Sully very kindly funded four in Cork. Quilcha kindly funded six. These were dotted around the country. And then we had one planted in Dublin through funding from KBIGI. Um, we're hoping um, that um, the programme obviously grows. In the meantime, I suppose we've had an opportunity to reflect and we've revisited the schools and we've captured, I suppose, some of the experiences of the teachers that have been engaged in our earlier plantings and the ones that went in last year. So I'm just going to play um, a short video. I think it's about three minutes, but it'll... Um, give you an insight into what they actually look like because there's nice drone footage, but also it'll give you an insight into how the teachers feel about having these woodlands on site. Unfortunately, we don't have our community people represented in this, so... Hi, my name is Rachel Geary and I oversee the LEAF Learning About Forest programme, which is an international environmental education programme and we also oversee Unquil Bjog, which is an initiative of the Farland. Unquil Bjog is Irish for little woodlands, and this is where we go into schools or communities and we plant little woodlands, small, dense, native woodlands, and we involve the students or community groups at every stage along the way. My name is Mo O'Connor and I'm a secondary school teacher in Presentation Secondary School here in Tralee. So the idea of the project is that we'd have an area of natural space and woodland for the students to enjoy and for the teachers to use as part of the curriculum within the school. Unquil Bjog is an outdoor living classroom. So when we engage with the schools, we get the students involved in every step of the process. So they come out and they get their hands dirty, they do soil tests, they look at the different species that already are on the site. And one of our main goals is to get students interested in outdoors and learning about the outdoors. We are delighted to welcome On Chuil Vyog here. This is an initiative developed by the LEAF project to bring trees, everything to do with forests on campus. So here they're setting up a native woodland, which as you can see in the background, our students are planning and plotting at the moment. This is student-led, whereby the students will be planting trees, monitoring the trees, learning all about the trees. And it's, it's a long-term project. So over the years, different students will be participating. And we are hoping that those student teachers will go out to schools in the future and they will start similar initiatives 
in primary schools around the country. I'm a class teacher in the Limerick Educate Together School and the way I use the Quill Biog is we bring the children regularly out. It could be nearly a daily experience where we find that the more you bring them out, the more they want to be here. So we would use it to teach science. It's a place of meditation. It's a place that we bring them out, you know, for sing songs. We have, we're lucky enough to have a pizza oven, so um, kind of used for end of year celebrations. There's so many different ways we use it, but you know, it can also be a place, just a, a place for freedom, like they can run free and they've built dens here. You know, they've picked out their favorite trees. So it's just a space that they have really grown to love around the school. I guess the biggest benefit is it's lovely for our children in the school who predominantly are living in the city centre. A lot of them wouldn't have exposure to forests and they get a real chance to be loose, free, run around and experience the nature around them and the different trees and we do lots of different activities with it. We won't be here forever, the teachers won't be here forever um, and the children need to pass on that the love of the forest to each other. It's so important that the children want to retain greenery around because aesthetically it's just so beautiful to have the tiniest forest on our grounds. Spending time in nature has a positive impact on our health and well-being. However, these little woodlands are not only important for our own health, but they are also critical habitats for the health of our planet. So I think it's fair to say that um, our little woodlands tick many of the boxes after hearing all the talks over the last um, um, yesterday and this morning. So moving forward, as I say, we've already got 20 little woodlands planted around the country. Unfortunately, COVID hampered a lot of our progress. Um, this year, moving forward um, between 2022 and 23, we have seven planned and um, hoping to get these trees in the ground this side of Christmas, um, hopefully no more lock lockdowns or closures. Um, and then we're potentially planning another seven or eight for the new year. Um, plans haven't been confirmed yet, but there's a lot of talk and discussion. Um, so yeah, and just as I said, there's four in leash. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. And we have, again, been given further funding from our private sponsor in the US. It all sounds very secretive, <laughs> um, but she's been wonderful and she absolutely believes in the programme. So every money, she drops a little bit of a fund into our bank account. Um, so, but she's ring fenced that money for Limerick area. Um, so just moving on to Leash then, we were very excited. Um, I actually presented a similar talk to um, the environmental awareness officers during last planting season and Suzanne Dempsey and Leash County Council picked up the phone I think within a couple of hours saying we want to get some of these in the ground. I don't know where I'm going to get the money but we want them. <laughs> um, so we were very excited. So Leash are leading the way in addressing the biodiversity emergency by planting these little woodlands. Um, you can see here in the photo, um, this photo is a very familiar site and yesterday morning we touched on planning and our, at our round table the schools came up. Um, there's loads of wonderful schools being built around the country and unfortunately from a biodiversity perspective they're very much lacking. This is what many of them look like like it's tarmac, it's concrete, it's mowed areas with maybe a few token trees that are unfortunately very often strimmed to, to death, basically. So um, putting in these little green spaces is a wonderful opportunity for a lot of these schools. Um, so what we went up when we went up last night, or, sorry, last week, we identified the sites within the school grounds. Um, we have three primary schools and actually an education centre. And just like the connection with Mary I, this is a wonderful opportunity because many people go through this education centre, teachers and um, community groups. So a fantastic opportunity to have a demonstration site there using our Quill Bug and hopefully encouraging others to do more. And again, just another site to see there. It's um, mowed grass, tarmac and car, uh, concrete again. So our little woodland will be very much welcomed. Um, and 
Um, so just going in, I suppose, to a little bit more detail and the specifics about the, the whole process. Yesterday, I think it was Ricky that mentioned um, no substitute for habitats, and I loved it, so I jotted it down, and it's so true. So our Quail Biog programme, it's about planting native biodiverse habitats. Um, they are for people and wildlife, so opening them up, creating space for people to walk through, explore nature, have that experience, and reconnect is one of our main objectives. Um, we're open to school and community spaces. In the school setting, they're providing an outdoor classroom. There was many um, negatives to the whole COVID scenario, but there was also some positives. And from our side, it meant students and teachers wanted to be outside. So now we're able to create this outdoor space for them. Um, of course, we've talked a lot about citizen science yesterday and this morning, and these provide places for citizen science where we always would be encouraging students and community groups to collect the data and record and then send this into the data center. Um, and of course, well-being as well being another important one. I mentioned objectives yesterday, our general um, objectives for our woodland programs, but more specifically for Quail Biog. Um, we're very site specific, and I suppose this is why we um, pulled back a little bit from the tiny forest program, um, because we are working with um, communities and schools. Every school site is very different. Some of them are coastal, some of them have very wet ground. You saw Aileen um, from Skullwater Day talking there. That was an extremely wet site. So we went in with a lot of alder and birch and huge growth there as well. Um, we're very flexible and practical in how we deal with situations. You have to be when you're dealing with schools and community groups. Um, everyone has different needs. The sites are all very different. Um, but we're really good at being <laughs> flexible and practical in how we work. We share and collaborate. Um, we're accessible and affordable in comparison to maybe some of the other bigger um, um, planting projects. We, as I said at the very beginning, education is key to everything we do. So we have a range, actually, again, during COVID, we had a lot of time at our desks. So we, provide, we created a lot of um, educational resources. They're all available for free from our website. Um, and even though they're I suppose initially with the schools in mind, they have also been used in community settings and they're absolutely perfect as well. Um, at the last time we presented, we were asked about um, where we source our trees from. We do our absolute best to make sure they're of Irish seed. It doesn't always happen, but we do our best and we work with our suppliers um, hard to make sure there that we get as many as we can. Um, we always encourage local resources. So, for example, in a school, we would encourage them to source cardboard from their local super value or wherever is nearby. Um, so local is very important. Um, the process itself. In an ideal setting, we will go in and we'll plant 200 trees of mixed species um, with a planting of about 200 meters squared. We include space for seating. This is really important as well from an educational perspective. Um, you can see here from the photo, it's a school in Donegal. Now they got additional funding to put in this lovely seating. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can use um, logs, um, cut, cut down and use them for seating as well. Um, we always would encourage the development of nature trails and um, signage is really important as well because it's all about education. And again, yesterday there was a lot of talk about you know, trying to change people's attitudes to the wild areas and how they look. So signage can really be um, helpful on this. Um, I mentioned about we're very flexible in how we deal with um, each site. Very often we don't have the space to go in and plant 200 trees or there might be, there mightn't be that kind of space available. So we might look at planting a hedgerow and a cluster. Um, if we're going in to plant hedgerows, of course, many of you will know they're essential ecological corridors. They allow wildlife to move from one area to the other. They can often connect fragmented habitats. And just to give you a very simple example, presentation, they were on the video there. They have a wetland area, their school, which was grass and mow and concrete, and then the town park was on the other side. And we went in and we planted, and when we went back for the follow-up visit, we'd already spotted frogs and things in there. The school intend on connecting their woodland with a hedgerow all the way to the other side of their grounds, which will connect to the town park. So again, we're helping and supporting them to do this. Um, just some photos of our signage. So 
the bigger one is our main sign that we would have at the entrance to the woodland. It tells you about the species you might find and, of course, the benefits, the ecosystem benefits. Um, and then the smaller signs are just the species sign there. Um, they're in English, Irish, and their canopy layer is also included in those signs. The process that we, um, I suppose, we've um, um, developed over the years and we've tweaked it a little bit here and there, but day one is our initial site visit. At this stage, we're probably not engaging with the students too much. We'd be talking maybe with teachers or community groups, board of management, looking at what's, what site would be most suitable. In some ca cases, there's no option. It's just, it's just that corner at the back of the school or in the community, and that's absolutely fine, but there may be options. So that process, also getting agreement signed because we've had one of our very early plantings, we put it into the school and because we didn't weren't aware of um, building that was happening it ended up being taken out so we've learned along the way and we're a little bit stricter and um, having the agreements with the schools and communities from day two on then we involve and engage in education upskill at every stage because this is then when we bring in the community groups or the students from the schools we do we go through the site assessment the soil test as you saw there in the video we habitat map we do species id with them and then day three and four we come in with our trees and we plant the area we mulch with them um, layers of cardboard and bark mulch on top just to give the young trees a chance to get above the grass height um, and we will show the students and community groups how to do this in case they need to do more in the following year and then we have a follow-up visit and this would be we might look at trail development cutting low-hanging branches again more species id this kind of thing um, we've also actually just been talking about in the last few um, weeks we're now going back and revisiting our initial woodlands um, which were planted in 2018 and 19 and normally we stop at day five purely because of funding um, but now we're looking at maybe working on um, our funding because we feel these schools and community groups need follow-up visits in year two and three just to get them going um, and give them that extra bit of support. Tree species, I'll just fly through this. I mean, basically, this is all our native trees. We don't always plant them. We try to plant as mixed um, variety as possible, but depending on location, soil, etc., we will select the most suitable trees. So this is essentially all our native trees. Um, biodiversity, in the earlier years, you'll have the ivy, the bramble, nettles, dandelions, daisies, wild grasses, and mushrooms. As the canopy layer develops, this might change a bit. You might have more ferns, bluebells. Sometimes we'll leave it happen naturally. Other times we might encourage the schools to introduce these plants. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a process and every site is different. Again, just some of the other biodiversity that we've been finding, of course, wood lice, centipedes, millipedes, moths, beetles, bees, dragonflies, damselflies, all these wonderful creatures. Um, some images from some of the schools then as well. We have the elephant, um, hawk moth, caterpillar, the cockchafer um, beetle, and any experts here on the damselflies or dragonflies, you might be able to tell us what they are. Um, and of course, then we see our frogs coming in as the years go on and leaving old wood there, dead wood, so that we're creating habitats. You don't have to go off and buy fancy bug hotels and all of this. Very often, it's already there just to leave it on site. Um, you can find us all over social media. Um, we love sharing our positive stories. And um, so, yeah, be sure to check us out. The video that I played earlier is on our YouTube site. We have a longer version. It's six minutes long. And it just goes into a bit more detail on the whole process. If any of you are interested in the local authorities about planting these woodlands, absolutely, we'd love to have a conversation, maybe even um, look at what we've already done. So um, we've got lots of great examples around the country. Thank you very much.